uh, you've done the creative part of it. You've, you've written the script, you've uh, drawn the book, it's done. Take us through the next step, the publication aspect of it. Um, I think both of you guys, all of you guys, have publishers that you work with frequently. Um, but how did you get hooked into those publishers, and um, what's it like to self-publish versus uh, work for hire? Well, I, I can't speak to self-publishing. Matt, did you self-publish? I did some mini comics, mini -comics stuff. Stuff. It's like guys with laser swords. <laughs> <laughs> My, uh, yeah, I do, I do, I've done a lot of work for hire, but my, the main company I work for, I do work with, is, is Oni Press. And, uh, and I, I hate to say it, but like anything else, part of it is sometimes who you know and having access. Obviously, I was, so I was introduced, I had a portfolio. If I wasn't good enough to get to work, I wouldn't have a job. But yeah. it did help that I knew somebody at the time who introduced me. I was in the right place at the right time. They lost an artist on a project that they were behind on, and I had happened to have just done some sample pages from that same script that I got an early copy of the script. So even though I wasn't technically good enough to be drawing comics, they were in a bind and they needed somebody quick. And that's how I got my first job with them. And I, I just got better because I had to do the job. I just got better as I went along. And uh, with that company, that job led to another job, led to another job. I got a really good relationship with them, with the writers I worked with. And, uh, and now I've been doing work with them off and on for almost, almost eight years. And that's how I was able to have you know, really an open door policy as far as pitching stuff. That's how Cullen and I were able to, to get in with him. And uh, now Cullen's doing a few projects for this, with this company as well. And that's, when I think about it, pros versus comics, hands down, that's why I like, I like comics more. For me, with pros, if you want to write a novel, you finish, you have, if you don't have a finished novel, the chances of selling it are really, really good. But for me, at least, in comics, I've been able to pitch comic ide you know, ideas for a comic. And if they don't like it, I don't, I don't write it. Yeah, and you don't have to waste your time on it. I don't have to waste things. the energy writing it. Now, a lot of time goes into writing these proposals and perfecting them. But that's honestly what I like most about comics is probably the fact that I don't have to, if I have a great idea and I can plot it out, I can pitch that idea without having the complete product, you know, the yeah. complete, complete product. Um, and it's only is you know the publisher I've done the most with, and I've got the most projects probably coming out with in the future. Um, and then going into some of these other publishers, these larger publishers, it's a different world. Though. I mean, it's at this point, it's I'm dealing with things I haven't had to deal with uh, on this pitch I did for Marvel. Uh, that was a fact that I had that came about because I had sent them two years ago a copy of the Dan. And he called, called me out of the blue and said, hey, I read, I read the damn finally that you sent to me two years ago. <laughs> and uh, would you like to pitch for this, this book that I want to do? And he was very, even on the pitch, I mean, we went back and forth probably a half dozen times. He'd call me and say, two things. Two things you got to change. And I'd work on changing the beginning of the end. And then he'd call back, two more things you got to change. <laughs> and, I mean, it was just a lot of back and forth getting it until he finally was willing to say, all right, now you can give me a scene by scene outline of So it only gives you like more free reign than that. Obviously. And a lot and a lot less money. And a lot less money. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you get so much free reign. So if you gotta sacrifice. You, they can't really, they, yeah, if they're not paying you, they can't really tell you what to do. So hmm. you you have a leverage there. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I got kinda got lucky when I broke in um, with my first book with Top Shelf. They I mocked up the book and did it and just sent it to them and like twenty other publishers. And um, they wanted to publish it just as it was. And so after that first book, um, every book after that, or the next few books, I just did the top shelf. They was, you know, they're small, and they let me do whatever I want. And um, the thing I didn't realize is that uh, until like this last year or two, is that all the bigger publishers read all the top shelf stuff. And you know, they're fans of, of all the comics they don't publish. Um, so everybody, when Super Spike came out, People had started to hear about the book and me, and then um, I got, um, and then also at all the editors, everybody knows everybody too, so the Top Shelf guys knew uh, the editor at Dark Horse, and I was like, oh. It's very, very incestuous. Yeah, so it, it's just a thing, it's like, I got a great idea for a Dark Horse book, so I got a Dark Horse book coming out this year, and then I found out the Top Shelf guy knew um, editor at DC, and I was like, oh, I'd love to. 
to piece of vertigo books. I pitched them a vertigo book, and I'm, that's what I'm working on now. Um, the lucky part of that is, is that I did three or four books all on my own, sort of exactly what I wanted to do. And now, um, I'll keep just what you do, what you do. Right, so I, I'm getting some work from bigger publishers, but they're like, oh, we want it to look like a top shelf book, you know, we, we don't want it to be, you know, I don't have to fit some house style, and it just, just makes me feel lucky. Um, I think we have time for like one or two more questions. Um, I guess we'll start with Matt on this one. Um, this is more stylistic question when it comes to art. Do you tend to adapt the way that you draw to the type of story that you are going to do? I mean, do, do you find certain art styles work better for, for certain genres? Or do you pretty much have your way of doing it and, and um, you never change? That's, I, that's kind of a tough question. Um, All right, well, never mind. We'll move on. No, <laughs> thanks. Right. No, no, I, I just feel like, like my art style, I can bend it only so much. Like I can bend it one more, a little more realistic, or I can bend it more cartoony, but I can, it only bends a little bit. So I, what I have to do is try to figure out how, which way to bend it, and then just use other, other sorts of tools like design and color and layout to sort of um, give the right kind of feel to the story. And, then, and also, I, I feel like the stories I write end up being, I'm imagining them in my style of art already, so I feel like I don't really have to change it too much. Mm -hmm. um, but I do a little bit just depending on what, what time period it is or you know, what, the, what the theme of the book is. I think, I think Matt said exactly what I would have said. It's, it's basically that you have your style and then you're able to bend it a little bit one way or the other, depending on the genre you're working with. But again, I, I basically have my style and I, I've actually kind of intentionally develop it so that it will fit in any genre I want to put it into. Does that make yeah. sense? Because I have, I have you know, all kinds of interests across the board, um, you know, from crime to sci-fi to basic genre fiction. But I feel like I could, I tell everybody I go, I'm, a, I'm a very adequate artist. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not very good at doing any one thing, but I'm very adequate at doing everything. And I like that, I like that. Because uh, I can draw a western, I can draw a romance, I can draw a crime book. And I, I can do it all well enough. See, well, the there's some people who draw one thing really well. You can't do anything else. I'm limited, and I don't want to be limited in what I do. You say that about your art, but the thing you're missing is that um, there's more to it than just the way it looks. You know, the, the storytelling is also part of it. So the collaboration between you and Colin, that's to me as important as as what the actual drawing looks like. That's that's something that people don't ever pick up on. I mean, that, to me, that's the most important thing in comic book art is the storytelling, and I, I feel like I'm pretty strong at the storytelling, and uh, even if my art doesn't capture you right away, like flipping through something, I think if, I feel like if you read it, you'll appreciate the storytelling aspect, which is... Yeah, and I, that's one of the reasons I like working with these guys is, you know, there's a lot of artists who really do great poster art, Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but nice pinups, and some of the, I mean, in my opinion, some of the artists who are really the, the, the well, flashy, the, the flashy artists, and, I can't read. I can't read the comics they draw because I can't follow it from panel to panel. I can't tell what's going on. Yeah, well, they, they don't make any attempt to create mood or atmosphere. Um, so it, it's definitely to me, it's more important to be able to tell a great story, to be able to tell a story visually, than to to just be this you know super hot artist. That, you know, and I, I have. I, I always try to do my best. It's my goal to always stay out of the way of the story. I don't want my art to distract from the story. I don't have a lot of panels, you know, breaking the page and, you know, things that are really in your face. I want the story to work with my art. I right, you, you don't want to with my art to tell the story. You don't want to call attention to the fact that exactly. you are reading a comic. Right, you, right. You just want right. people to get engrossed. Right, yeah. Um, one last question, then I'm going to open it to...